everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am Oracle ASMR, and I am super excited to kick off a new series that I am calling ASMR Behind the Music. And the origin of this idea and this concept came from the fact that I wrote and recorded an album of my own original music about 10 years ago and I never did anything with it and I've really only shown it to some close friends and family members but I never released it to the public I never put it um, put it out there I never formed a band to play any of my songs um, so I thought now that I have an ASMR channel I could uh, share the songs with all of you. Um, and so, um, before I jump into it and talk about the, uh, individual song that you're going to hear today, I thought that I would, um, talk about, in general, the whole recording process and kind of give you a little bit of a background on, into, like, what is going on here. So, I have been playing music all my life, and I started playing piano when I was eight, clarinet when I was about ten, drums when I was about twelve, guitar when I was about fourteen, and a bunch of other instruments just playing around here and there. And um, basically from like eight until now I've been just dabbling in uh, playing all those different instruments in uh, different capacities. My primary instrument is drums. I played drums in most bands that I've been in. I've been in quite a few bands. And um, I played keys in a funk band for about a year and a half, two years as well. Um, and then the last band that I was in, I played a bunch of different instruments. We did like a musical chairs thing where we would rotate instruments in between songs. It was pretty cool and fun. Um, yeah, so I have, uh, over the course of all that time from, I was, I started in bands when I was 14 and I quit the last band I was in, um, when I was about 34. So it was about 20 years of playing music and playing shows all over the place and um yeah just hauling my gear around and and doing that thing and writing songs and recording albums and um yeah so uh during that time I would write and record my own songs in addition to the songs that I would write with the band and uh, over time, I amassed this pretty big catalog of songs. And back in 2009, 2010, I had a house and we decided to uh, record the band that I was in. We recorded in my living room and I had all the gear and equipment to do the recording. And so we set up in my living room, I set up my drums and mic'd everything up and we spent about, oh, I don't know, on and off, probably about eight or nine months recording. And while I had all that gear set up in my house, I wanted to take that opportunity to lay down some tracks for my own music. Because I had written all of these songs, and I probably, at the time, I probably had like 30, 35 songs, maybe. I completed songs that I had written, but I had never listened or heard those songs played with a full band before, let alone just like a recording of me and my guitar playing it. And so while I had this equipment set up in my living room, I took advantage of that time. After the guys went home, I would sit down and I would record drum parts and bass parts and piano parts and keyboard parts and vocal parts. And after a while, I ended up uh, essentially like recording an entire album. And that was kind of the whole goal of it. And I never really thought about um, really sharing it with anybody um, outside of my friends and family until recently um, because I didn't really have a platform for it. So, uh, yeah, 
so I've been sitting on this music for literally a decade, and I'm super excited to start sharing it with all of you. So, I gave this some thought, and I recognize that this is ASMR, and so, um, like, I'm gonna do the ASMR part, but then I figured the only way that I can really do this, at least, like, like, be able to talk about it and then have you hear it immediately is to, is to just put the song at the end of this video. So, all of these videos are going to be structured that way, where I have, um, you know, my guitar and I'm going to sing, or I'm, I'm not going to sing, um, <laughs> I'm going to play guitar for you and I'm going to play the song acoustically, um, because for a lot of the songs that you will hear, original uh, written piece that I wrote it on was on this guitar. Well, not this guitar, but a guitar. Um, but when you listen to the music, in a lot of cases, you really can't hear what that original sound was, like what it was supposed to be, because I would sometimes actually pull the guitar track out and you just hear piano or you just hear, you know, bass and an electric guitar part, a different part. And so I wanted to play the song for you, ASMR style, and talk about the song as I played it, and, you know, talk about parts that you will hear in the recorded version. And, um, and the reason also why I want to do that is because I think there are some parts that I wrote, say, on, on piano or like a guitar lick that I wrote that I really, really want to emphasize, like to have you guys listen to it because I'm really proud of it. There are some parts of some songs that I'm just super stoked on and, and I want to, I wanted to, uh, point it out. So uh, I'll be like, Hey, like you should check out this bass line here cause it's dope. So look out for that. Um, yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, this took a while to record, I remember. I remember that. <laughs> it took a long time to record. Um, mainly because I'm not... I mean, primarily, I'm a drummer, but I'm not a bass player. I'm not a vocalist. I'm not... I mean, I can play keyboard and piano, but I wouldn't call myself a piano player. And so... Um, you know, obviously I wrote the songs on guitar and that wasn't a problem. But then when I had to write a bass line to it, I'm not a bass player. And so when I would go to play or put a bass track on top of things, I literally had to write it first. And so it was like every time I would write a track or write a part with an instrument, I had to sit and listen to the song over and over and over while I wrote a part for it then just press record and play that part and um so the whole that obviously it was like that took a long time there was some parts that it was a couple of days before I could find something that I liked and could record so anyways super long-winded explanation but um you kind of get the gist of it um yeah so um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in the description below, so if you want, you can jump right to the song, and without further ado, I'm going to start this off with a song that I wrote when I was, I believe I was 17 when I wrote this. The song is called Bad Habit, and it is very basic. Uh, from a songwriting perspective, from a chord progression perspective, it's pretty basic, and, um, you'll hear, if I can remember when I wrote the songs, like some of the songs I wrote later on when I was a little bit more skilled of a guitar player, and it might show, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it will show, uh, but other songs are just super simple and basic, but they totally work, um, and one of the cool things before I go on one of the cool things that I found when I was recording was how fun it was to add layers onto the song and to write individual, like brand new individual parts for a 
song that I had only heard one way. Because you remember, like, I'm playing these songs on acoustic guitar only, and so this is the only instrument that I hear. And so when I play these for years, literally, like, years and years and years, over and over and over, I only hear them one way. So you can imagine how excited I was to finally get the chance to put backup music to these acoustic songs and hear it with a full band. I mean, in some cases, like 12, 13, 14 years after that I wrote them. So yeah, that was uh, that was really, really fun part and aspect of it that just kept my my motivation going to to complete it and to um, to do as many songs as I did. Um, I'm not going to share all the songs with you because uh, I wrote, I think, 16 or 17, but some of them are just kind of shitty. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> and some songs, um, the singing is just, um, just not that good. I'm not a vocalist. I'm not, but you all hear my singing voice. So um, click on the link below if you want to jump to that. So uh, yeah, so this first song, it's called Bad Habit, and it's very, like I said, it's very basic. So it starts with E, and E major, and E minor, and the song is about, uh, it's about uh, smoking pot, um, and at the time that I wrote it, uh, clearly, I, I don't remember exactly what was going on in my head, but, uh, I clearly I was like getting down on myself about smoking pot. I was like, I must have been feeling like I should quit or something. I don't know. But anyways, um, yeah, it's funny, like this song actually turned out almost exactly how I envisioned it in my head. I mean, right from the beginning, when I wrote it, I had what you will hear in mind, and it turned out really well. This is the one song that I'm one of the most, I'm the most proud of, almost the most proud of. Uh, I just, yeah, I'm super stoked on how it turned out. Um, uh, so a couple things I want to point out. Um, the bass line. So the whole bass part is actually a MIDI part. I believe the, the patch was a jungle bass or something like that. Jungle bass, yeah. And um, the, you'll hear the part in the second verse. Um, I tried to play it on my electric bass. It's just way too complicated. And then, um, well, it's not too complicated. It's just too difficult. I don't have the dexterity in my fingers to play it how I had wanted, wanted it to sound, so, um, yeah, so then I ended up trying to play it on the keyboard, and even then I couldn't play it on the keyboard, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some MIDI programming, and just program it in, and once when I did that, it just kind of, it automatically, it just locks into place, it's quantized, so it, it just, like, it fits in perfectly, and, um, yeah, drum part I really like. I got a really good drum sound on this entire song, and um, I guess the only thing that I would change on this entire song is the drum part on the second bridge. I would um, I would make it more intense. I would make it more intense than the second verse, because there's like this slow build up. You'll hear it. And um, yeah, I wish I had I wish I'd kept that build-up going a little bit all the way to the end, so, oh well. Next time I record it, I'll, I'll do that, so, yeah. Um, yeah. I think, uh, I think the, uh, the simplicity of it is one thing that makes it really kind of catchy in a way. Not catchy, but just, like, enjoyable. So, um, yeah, so super simple. And then it goes into uh, the bridge. Which 
which is actually um, a ripoff of another song. If you can recognize it. <laughs> this was not intentional. But uh, I like to say it's my way of paying homage to this band because they're one of my favorite bands. Um, some of you will recognize it. Hopefully. Because they're a wonderful band. But it's funny because I, I wrote this song and I didn't even realize this part was a ripoff of another band until like probably like seven or eight years after I wrote it. Um, but I kept it in there anyways. It's in the same key too. When I found out, I was like, oh, of course it's in the same key. Oh well. And then it goes into this part, which... I just love that chord because it's... It's like a sad chord. So originally when I wrote this, the build up was supposed to sound like this. this format.